The science of marine archaeology helps both unravel and preserve the underwater mysteries of the past. Much of human history is constructed from artifacts, and while land-based relics have been conserved and protected, those on the seafloor have often been neglected because they are more scarce, difficult, and often hazardous to access. Marine archaeology sites require specialized diving equipment and skills. Divers are limited at these sites because of depth, time constraints, and sometimes a lack of visibility. For deep sites beyond the reach of divers, submarines, or remote sensing equipment such as sonar for sound navigation ranging are needed. Modern, high-resolution multi-beam sonar provides a new mapping tool for marine archaeological investigations. With multi-beam sonar, complex seafloor targets can be mapped from a safe distance and the true three-dimensional shape of an object can be seen with centimeter-level resolution. The imagery from multi-beam archaeological research provides rich public outreach materials and tools that can help in the management of protected areas. Hydrography, which is the science of producing charts or maps of water-covered areas of the Earth's surface, has evolved from the simplest forms of measurement, using a lead line for a single depth value, to a single beam sonar and full coverage with multi-beam sonar. The use of high-resolution mapping technologies originally developed for hydrography, along with changes to legislation that provide better protection of marine artifacts, have dramatically changed marine archaeology in the last decade. In British waters, the SCAPA Flow Marine Archaeology Project, or SCAPA Map for short, has been a test case for these changes. The focus of the project has been the remains of the Imperial German Fleet scuttled in 1919 at Scapa Flow, a body of water off the Orkney Islands in Scotland. The fleet was detained here to be handed over to the enemy. It was sunk on the orders of Admiral von Ruder to prevent it from falling into the hands of the enemy at all costs. Some time later, England had a number of the ships salvaged so they could at least earn some money by selling them for scrap. After salvaging what they could from the sunken fleet, only seven ships remain in a variable state of preservation. All of the wrecks are within diving range, which is a significant source of revenue. However, if the wrecks are going to be preserved for the future, active management is required. Until 1999, the legal state of knowledge was basically the location of the wrecks. Historic Scotland, a government agency charged with safeguarding the nation's historic environment, commissioned the Scapa Map project to address this problem. Since then, thanks to a collaborative effort of various agencies and businesses, Scapa Map has used a variety of high resolution remote sensing techniques and can now compare surveys done at different times to assess wreck stability so that the base map knowledge of their state of preservation and likely future continues to improve. On June 6, 1944, D-Day, the combined Allied forces began Operation Overlord, the invasion of Hitler's fortress Europe. The logistics of this effort were staggering. By the end of June, more than one million men, 177,000 vehicles, and 586,000 tons of supplies landed on the Normandy beachhead. In support of the invasion, Allied naval forces mounted Operation Neptune, an ambitious and ingenious strategy involving nearly 5,000 vessels in the construction of floating concrete caissons across the English Channel. Two fully functional ports, codenamed Mulberry, were constructed in the span of less than two weeks. The creation of these ports was a key component of Operation Neptune, since the initial invasion avoided the strongly defended harbors of Cherbourg and Le Havre, but required the delivery of approximately 5,000 tons of material per day to the Allied troops. 
the capacity of these artificial ports would equal that of the Port of Dover that had taken seven years to construct. During the operations, several hundred Allied vessels and tons of war materials were lost off the Normandy coastline. From the 19th to the 22nd of June, a rare 4 7 storm struck Normandy and washed more than 800 vessels onto the beaches. This storm wreaked havoc on the American Mulberry Harbor. The storm surge destroyed 20 of the 30 caissons at Omaha Beach, forcing the Allies to abandon the American harbor. Recognizing the potential historical significance of U.S. Navy wreck sites off the D-Day beaches and seeking to fulfill its mandate to manage and preserve historic ship and aircraft wrecks, the Naval Historical Center's NHC Underwater Archaeology Branch undertook a three-year remote sensing study off the Normandy coast. Specific objectives of this study were to locate wrecks associated with Operation Overlord and provide an indication of the state of preservation for each wreck site. In the first two years of its study, the NHC used the traditional tools of marine archaeology to locate and document potentially significant targets off Utah Beach, Pont du Hoc, and Omaha Beach. The study revealed nearly 3,000 magnetic anomalies and more than 700 acoustic targets. After closer study, the NHC selected 30 to 40 targets as high-priority sites, warranting further investigation. In the summer of 2002, the NHC collaborated with the Center for Coast and Ocean Mapping at the University of New Hampshire and Rezon Incorporated to survey the targets and document their state of preservation and impact on the surrounding environment. The multi-beam sonar data off the Omaha Beach presents a clear and unparalleled view of the state of destruction of the caissons, ranging from near complete destruction to excellent preservation as well as the effect of the caissons on local sediment transport. A survey of several Sherman Duplex Drive or DD tanks that sunk approximately four kilometers off of Omaha Beach was also done. Sherman DD, shown here entering the water, is a standard U.S. medium tank modified to enable it to float and maneuver about in any depth of water. On reaching shore, the canvas side walls can be dropped and the main armament of the tank brought into immediate action. Over the years, salvage operations removed many of the wrecks deemed hazardous to safe navigation and activities of the local fishing communities. While salvagers completely removed some ships, other vessels remain as an important testament to the courageous effort of the Allied troops and to one of the most important operations in U.S. military history. Despite the challenges provided by weather, tides, and currents, the use of a dynamically focused multi-beam system in support of the D-Day archaeological studies proved to be a tremendous success. Over approximately seven days of operation, 35 hours of surveying were carried out, imaging much of the remains of the Mulberry Harbor off Omaha Beach, as well as approximately 40 other targets. Unlike traditional marine archaeological search tools, the multi-beam sonar can provide detailed, undistorted, and quantitative information on the 3D geometry of the target being surveyed from a platform that is safely above the target. Unlike traditional visual or photographic inspection, the multi-beam sonar floods a relatively large area, tens to hundreds of meters, with carefully controlled sound waves, allowing the full context of targets to be established quickly. When combined with state-of-the-art 3D visualization techniques that allow the viewing of both rendered surfaces and individual points, the data return provides an unprecedented level of detail, including the ability to recognize individual components of the wrecks, like ramps, gun turrets, hatches, etc. The state of preservation of the wrecks and the impact of the wrecks on the surrounding seafloor. Given these capabilities, we suspect that multi-beam sonar will play an increasingly important role in future marine archaeological studies.